look, I, when I was growing up, I was a JU basketball fan. JU basketball was a big deal in 1970 when I was 11 years old. They went to the final game, the final game against UCLA. Uh, let me tell you how big a deal that was. There, I was playing on this travel basketball team. We were on a bus going to play a game in Live Oak. On the way down there, JU was playing for the national championship. Back then, the national championship was on a Saturday. It was Thursday, Saturday, the Final Four, not Saturday, Monday. We, didn't, we couldn't follow the game because we were driving while the game was on, 4.30 in the afternoon. So we had one parent drive behind his school bus and would flash lights, two flashes for a JU basket, one flash for a UCLA basket, and we would follow the score. We were actually keeping score on the bus. Uh, left blinker for a free throw, right blinker for a free throw. And can you imagine that scene? 10, 11 year old boys on the back of a bus keeping track of the JU UCLA basketball game because that's how much it meant to everybody. Yeah, my, my, my story is, is a simple one. I, I, was, I wanted to be in sports because I'm not sure there's that much else I was good at. Um, I'm born and raised here. I'm a Jacksonville kid. I always wanted to work in sports and I wanted to do it in Jacksonville. So uh, I'm very blessed. I, I grew up playing baseball here. I went to the University of Florida. I got a journalism degree. I was a sports writer right out of there from, for the Florida Times Union. I did that uh, for many years. And then sports radio was just kind of starting. And uh, in, in the late 80s, I was working at the Times Union as a sports writer, and in 1988, a gentleman named Bill Mize, who I knew he'd coached me in, in Little League Baseball, he was the general manager at a radio station in town, the QIK, the AM station, the J-Core station at the time. And he said, look, sports radio is starting to become a thing. Uh, we'd like you to host a sports radio show for us uh, three days a week. At the time, I was making big money, like 14 grand in Benny's. And, uh, and, and he said, I'd like you to do this. And I said, Bill, I appreciate the offer, and it's very kind of you, but I, I don't know anything about broadcast. I'm a sports writer. He goes, I'll pay you 150 a week. I said, sold. Uh, you needed the money, and I needed the money, and that's how it started. 1988, loved it. Uh, then Jay Solomon hired me after that to, to work with him and really taught me the business, and, and I learned sports radio uh, from Jay, uh, how to sell it, how to, how to connect with people, what to say on the air, what not to, and I really learned from him. So I've been doing it since 1988, and I did it at 930 for a lot of years. I was very blessed to do that. Um, and then a bunch of us got together I, with Steve Griffin's leadership, said, what if we started our own? And, and that's how this thing happened. So I'm born and raised here, uh, played baseball as a kid here, went to Florida, was a sports writer for the Times Union until this sports radio thing came along, and thank God that it did. Um, the play-by-play -play part was interesting. I was, I was covering the Gators when I left, uh, when I went from sports writing to being in broadcast and got to be friends with Jeremy Foley, the AD at the time. And once I got into the broadcast side, Jeremy said, look, we're going to use you to, uh, to, to do some stuff with us. He was sort of instrumental in me making the change. And, and I started doing stuff on the Gator Network. I did some baseball games. I did a women's basketball games. I did pre and post on the football stuff. And that led to play by play with Gino Toretta and Touchdown Radio. Uh, I did seven years of national games with him. And then uh, I started doing Jags games uh, in 2014, which has been obviously the most important assignment of my career and I've loved every minute of it so it's been a lot of fun. When we started 1010 we weren't we weren't sure how it was going to go but we had, we had a pretty good plan. I think we had an idea of what we wanted it, what, what we wanted it to be. I think that's the cool part. I, I think uh, once we got into radio uh, and everybody kind of knew who we were uh, that was a big deal for all of us. We do remotes, we bump into people. Um, I, I can tell you before 1010 when I left from 930 we stopped at 1460, a small station in town, and they came to 1010. Um, I thought, well, I, I was a big deal at 930, and everybody knew who I was, and I was on the Gator Network, so this is going to be great. Everybody will know who I am. Well, I went to a smaller station, and I can't tell you how many people came up to me and said, hey, Frank, man, I used to love you on the radio. What are you doing now? I'm like, well, I'm still on the radio. And that's when I realized the importance of a real station with real promotion and real power behind it, and I think that's what made, made 1010 um, so cool. I'll tell you this, too. I think sports really matters in Jacksonville. I love our city. We have the Jaguars. We don't have a lot of other, we don't have another major league pro team. We got some other pro teams, but not major league teams. We love the Gators. We love the Knowles. We love Georgia. 
I think sports matters in our city. I think the sports fans really care, and I think it's a neat group of sports fans. I think that's one of the coolest things about, about being a 1010 is that we connect with all these sports fans. They get mad at us sometimes. Uh, we used to take callers all the time. We don't take quite as many anymore. They're always mad at us. Sometimes people are mad at us on Twitter. But I think that cool connection is what makes 1010 really special. I, I, think, I think people care. The fact that someone gets in their car in the afternoon after a long day or making sales calls or doing whatever they did, and they turn us on and we're a little bit of a respite as they, as they drive home, man, that's cool. Because I know how much they care about Jaguars, Gators, Knolls, Dogs, whoever it is they follow. And for us to be able to kind of share that, to share our thoughts on it and maybe entertain, we hope to, we hope we are. That's kind of cool.